All right, folks, uh, Mr. Hansen here. We're going to look at uh, one more exercise here in the introduction to assembly design um, learning pathway. So we've already looked at how to insert parts in an assembly. We looked at different mate types and how to get mate connectors to line up. Uh, here we're going to focus on some tips and tricks for working efficiently with assemblies and on shape. And so there's some tricks that can make the repetitive tasks that sometimes happen, uh, make those a little bit more efficient. Uh, so let's take a look at this assignment. Um, it's going to be creating what's called a universal joint, which is a joint that can rotate uh, in any direction. Uh, they're used in a lot of different mechanical designs. They're used in you know, cars and they work with axles and all kinds of things. Um, so you should be able to make a copy of this exercise. There's parts and stuff to get you started. Um, I've already got my copy ready to go here. Um, first things first, let's create an assembly. Hit the plus sign. Create assembly. Uh, let me go ahead and rename that something meaningful. All right, we'll call that universal joint assembly. And hopefully you know the drill by now. I'm going to hit the insert button. I'm going to stick some parts in here. So I'm going to go ahead and insert this universal joint. Uh, let me go ahead and oop, hit the green check mark to save that. I'm going to right click this part and fix it uh, so that it doesn't move. This universal joint is going to have a lot of these revolute mates and there's going to be a lot of rotation in its movement. If you don't have a part fixed when you get started, um, your motion is going to go all kinds of crazy when you try to actually drag your things around and see how this thing moves. Um, all right, let me go ahead and insert my next set of parts. Uh, and there, this is a central... Uh, cube with uh, bushings and axles connected to it. So I'm going to insert my universal joint component. I'm going to put that up here a little bit so it's kind of out of my way. Um, and of course, you know, I just inserted this. There's nothing actually connected between these two parts. They not, are not assembled even though they look like they're kind of put together. Uh, we actually need to go through and do the assembly for those. Uh, first things first, we're going to position this cube. Uh, so you'll notice um, kind of in the middle of my yellow, uh, what's called a flange, uh, there is one of these mate connectors, and that's a custom mate connector created in the part studio. Uh, we'll look at that if we need to take a look at it. Same thing in my cube. There are two uh, mate connectors here at the center that are going to correspond to the different ways that this joint can rotate. Uh, so I'm going to actually create a revolute joint between... One of the mate connectors in the middle of this cube and the mate connector here in the center of my flange. So let me select the revolute mate connector. I'm going to select this uh, flange mate connector. And I'm going to try and select the mate connector that's parallel to the one I just selected. All right, so that should be that one. I'm going to go ahead and add some limits to how this can rotate because I know. Uh, the universal joint should have 180 degrees of rotation in either direction. Uh, so I'm going to set this rotation to be a minimum of negative 90 degrees and positive 90 degrees, uh, which will give me a total of 180 degrees rotation. So hit the green check mark, and if you need to, you can click and you know rotate this guy around, see how he moves. All right, let me reset that before we go to the next step. All right. Uh, the next thing is going to be working with this uh, dark blue part, which is an axle for my uh, flange and uh, center cube to rotate around. And there's this light blue part, which is uh, going to be a bushing between those two pieces so that they don't rub against each other. Uh, so uh, we're going to do a fasten mate to join these two pieces together. So I'm going to zoom in. Um, this you know, little blue thing fits over. Uh, the cylinder sticking out of our blue axle. Uh, let me click. Let me click the fasten mate. You be a little bit careful about what you're selecting here. If these things are put together correctly, I believe it's this. Yeah, this uh, outside circle that it should be uh, mated up against, and that should be uh, up against this circle here. So if I have those th two things 
uh, correctly selected, you should see it fits pretty flush on the end of the cylinder of the axle. All right, easy enough. All right, now we're gonna put this axle where it belongs in the rest of my assembly. And so the idea is that this cube in the middle, um, it'll be able to rotate around this axle, uh, but the bushing itself should be fastened, sorry, the axle is gonna rotate around the flange. The bushing itself should be fastened to the center block. So I'm gonna select a fasten mate. I want this circular ring of my light blue bushing. And I want that to be fastened to the edge of the center block. So that should line up with this, the circle of the center block. All right, if we've got that correct, that light blue bushing should kind of sit smack dab in the center. And it looks like I did not get the right thing clicked. So I'm going to actually uh, hit the X by that joint and see if I can try that again. I need the... need to make sure I've got this. There we go, the center point selected. Okay, that looks like that's lined up a little bit better. Uh, you should see uh, the large diameter portion of the bushing fitting snugly between the orange flange and the gray center block. Okay, cool, cool, cool. That looks like it's supposed to. Hit the green check mark and that should update everything else attached to that bushing. All right, now uh, to create this universal joint, I could do that same thing a bunch more times. In fact, I need to do it three more times for, th uh, for this joint. And so um, it's kind of a pain to have to do the same thing three times. Um, there are tools built into Onshape that let you essentially copy and paste uh, things that you've done uh, without having to necessarily recreate your design. So I'm gonna actually select my, this, this dark blue thing, this light blue thing. So my axle and my, I want my uh, dark blue axle and my light blue bushing. And I'm gonna create what's called a sub assembly from those. Cause those things are, you know, they fit together and they're always going to fit together um, regardless of how I copy this. So if you right click those two guys that are selected uh, you can go down to something. There we go. Move to new sub assembly. That's going to create a new assembly document uh, with just those two um, parts. And so if I go to my new assembly, uh, there they are uh, the two parts and that facet mate we use to connect them. Um, to make this uh, as easy as possible, I'm going to go ahead and uh, locate this thing a little bit better. I'm going to click this bottom edge. Um, I want to let's see, uh, move the center point of this bottom edge to the origin. And I want to realign this so that it's facing uh, the top. And so right now it's facing the right side. So I want to... Uh, take this axis here. I'm going to align that with the z-axis. That's going to rotate it so that um, the bushings facing the top face of this subassembly, which I think is a little bit different than how this in the assignment had it going. Uh, just we, we just want to make sure it's facing the top. All right, and let me go ahead and fix that in place so nothing moves. All right, so now we are ready to take this thing and replicate it uh, four times, which is gonna be all of the axle and bushings that I'll need for this universal joint assembly. Uh, so if you hit this little drop down box up here, if your screen's too small, it'll be in a, a drop down box. There should be something that says replicate. So we're gonna, we're gonna copy this thing. Uh, and what I'm gonna copy is my uh, new sub assembly. So that's gonna be both the axle and that, um, and that uh, fasten mate with the bushing, uh, all that stuff's already taken care of. And I'm gonna match that with a couple different uh, 
make connectors. And so thinking about this piece, I want that same make connector to be aligned with this, there we go. Yeah, with each of those faces. And so I should get four of these uh, axle bushing combinations spaced in each of the holes uh, in the center block. Uh, if you want to, you can go around and instead of selecting, yes, it's matching face and parts. Uh, if you have matching yeah, individual faces selected, you might have to go around and click uh, each of those little faces on each side of your cube to yeah, get them inserted correctly. But you should have four of them spaced identically to how the previous axle and bushing were spaced. So, and that right there, you know, if you can get good at doing that, it's a lot faster than making, uh, you know, four identical copies of the axle and positioning them each. Um, so if you can get used to doing that kind of thing with the replicate tool, it's, it makes your life a whole lot easier, especially with complicated assemblies. Uh, now we're going to need another copy of this uh, flange. So I'm just going to right click that. Uh, we will have to position that um, a little more manually. So I'm going to go make sure I got the right thing selected. Let me make sure the part selected. Right click that. I'm going to copy my universal joint flange. Right click somewhere in your workspace and go ahead and paste that. And now I've got two copies of that same thing. Uh, and we are going to reorient this around uh, the center point of that, sorry, the other make connector that's in the center of the uh, center block. So there's a lot of things going on here. Like there's a whole bunch of, you know, sub assemblies and there's, you know, now two flanges. I'm going to actually hide some of these pieces. Let me go ahead and hide. Need the block there, hide that flange. And so again, I want this make connector to be aligned with the opposite one that I didn't click um, in this center block. So I'm gonna select, and this should be uh, a Revolute Mate. I'm gonna select that make connector. I'm gonna select the make connector in the center block that's perpendicular to the original one that I selected before. Now, I'm going to go back and unhide all of these pieces. And you'll notice that uh, the way I had these uh, make connectors selected, that's put the top flange at a kind of a weird angle uh, relative to the other flange. I'm going to use this rotate tool to rotate it so it's sticking uh, straight up. And that's going to be my maximum. Uh, that's going to be the center position for this top flange. And you'll see it's at a 90 degree rotated angle relative to the bottom flange. Let me go ahead and set the same, uh, oops, not offsets, same limits. I want to go from negative 90 to 90, which will give me 180 degrees of motion with this piece. Um, that should be it. So now I have a universal joint. Super handy uh, type of joint to be able to uh, work with. And if you click it and you can drag things around, you should be able to see yeah, how this universal joint moves. And so I've got, you know, two different ways you can rotate. Uh, you know, it gives me 180 degrees of rotation in either direction. Uh, like I said, used in a lot of mechanical applications. Um, you should uh, go ahead and do the self-check to make sure you got this thing correct. Uh, in order to get the correct center of mass, do make sure that you have reset uh, both of your Revolute mates. So we got two Revolute mates that control the motion here. Um, and you can use the measure tool in the bottom corner to see if you got this thing correct.